but you can follow through. I know that the, the uh, scripture was emailed to you, and uh, it will be Acts 2, 1 to 21 for those who are worshiping with us online. I will read it in Korean, in English, and then in Spanish. 오순절 날이 이미 이름에 저희가 다 같이 한 곳에 모였더니 헌연히 하늘에서부터 급하고 강한 바람 같은 소리가 있어 저희 앉은 온 집에 가득하며 불의 혀같이 갈라지는 것이 저희에게 보여 각 사람 위에 임하여 있더니 저희가 다 성령의 충만함을 받고 성령이 말하게 하심을 따라 다른 방언으로, 방언으로 말하기를 시작하노라. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the, lang the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Pamphylia Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does it mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Entonces, Pedro con los once se puso de pie y dijo a voz en cuello, compatriotas judíos y todos ustedes que están en Jerusalén, déjenme explicarles lo que sucede. Presten atención a lo que les voy a decir. Estos no están borrachos, como suponen ustedes. Apenas son las nueve de la mañana. En realidad, Lo que pasa es que lo que anunció el profeta Joel, sucederá que en los últimos días, dice Dios, derramaré mi espíritu sobre todo el género humano. Los hijos y las hijas de ustedes profetizarán, tendrán visiones los jóvenes y los sueños, y sueños los ancianos. En estos días derramaré mi espíritu aún sobre mis siervos y mis siervas y profetizarán. Arriba en el cielo y abajo en la tierra mostraré prodigios, sangre, fuego y nubes de, human, de humo. El sol se convertirá en tiniebla y la luna en sangre antes que llegue el día del Señor, día grande y esplendoroso. Y todo el que invoca en el nombre del Señor será salvo. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, help us to listen to the voice of Pentecost. As you came to birth the church, come to us now to fill our hearts with your living, with your life-giving fire. Fill our ears with the sound of your wind and guide our tongues to speak your message of love. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. What a day of celebration, is it not? Do you see all the decoration with the red uh, tool and the, I don't know if you noticed all the work that Amy went through to decorate the panels on the side and just a, just a whole beautiful day of celebration where we come to rejoice, not only because it is a day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it, right? But we, we had the Bibles given to two beautiful young ladies, and uh, we blessed them with our love. And love. 
get to worship in person and uh, and we pray for the day when limitations will be lifted so that we can all, every single one of us can be together and also those who are worshiping with us. visiting were Jews. Many were foreigners who were visiting during the holidays. They were the traders. They were the travelers who joined the festivities and they were resting from their journeys. And in the midst of all these activities, the disciples were together in one place as they were told to do, when suddenly we heard the wind come crashing into the window, opening doors, throwing windows open, creating such a whirlwind that they all ended up with messy hair. But having a bad hair day was the least of their worries. For divided tongues in the form of fire, fire appeared among them and rested on each sure one of them. How many of you brought this? I hope you all wear it at some point. Yes? I asked the children to do so because I'll be wearing it when I greet you. So the children will join me. See, look at them. That's wonderful. They're wearing it. Thank you. Thank you, kids. So the Spirit comes over and empowers every one of them to do something that they have never done. These are monolingual people. And they start to speak in a different language. Luke gives us a bit more detail about the birth of the church on Pentecost. Luke describes how the Spirit descended of 120 believers in Jerusalem on the 50th day of Jesus' resurrection. The Spirit enabled them to testify to Jesus' impact on their lives and bold and Peter who had denied verbally not knowing Jesus three times. All of a sudden, he's empowered and emboldened by the Holy Spirit to speak of God's power. Jesus, his life, his death, and his resurrection. And you know what? 3,000 people converted in one day. I think we can imagine the uproar this created, so much so that a crowd made of foreigners gathered to hear these Galileans speaking in the native language of the onlookers. They heard the story of God's love and the mighty acts of Jesus' life and resurrection, death and resurrection, in their very own languages. This was a gift of Pentecost from Jesus who promised it to the disciples and to the rest of the world. As preacher and author, Barbara Brown Taylor writes in Home by Another Way, when Jesus let go of his last breath, that breath and then he was let loose on earth. He was such a pungent breath, so full of passion, so full of life, that it did not simply dissipate as so many breaths do. It grew in strength and in volume until it was simply, it was a mighty wind which God sent spinning 
through an upper room in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. God wanted to make sure that Jesus' friends were the inheritors of Jesus' breath. And it worked. Friends, it worked. It worked because it got the attention of others. The visitors and travelers from other nations wondered how they could speak their own native language. It worked because they understood that the message of God's salvation has no language barrier in the spirit. It worked because as Luke stated, at the end of the day, the church grew from 120 to 3,000 faithful disciples. But it worked not only numerically. You just get so caught up with numbers, right? <laughs> What's your membership? But it worked because it changed the lives of the disciples in such a way that nothing will ever be the same ever again. It worked because the world has never been the same with the gift of Pentecost that birthed the church. Yes, the events of Pentecost hold all the excitement of a birthday party no event planner could ever put together. But this gift of Pentecost does not come packaged in pretty wrapping papers and shiny bows. To me, it resembles the incarnational birth of Jesus who came to us as a baby born in a dirty manger. That was unexpected, right? That was surprising. Pentecost brings its own surprise factor. As Reverend Amy Butler wrote, Pentecost is very often a big, huge disruption. Can you repeat that again, please? Pentecost is, a very, is very often a very big disruption. It's a disruption, my friends. And she continues, a threat to our comfortable order. You could say, is God shaking things up? As God always seems to do, and those of us along, it takes, excuse me, and those of us along for the ride, holding on for dear life. Not completely sure exactly where we will end up. All the wind and fire disruption should have told the first disciples something, but they didn't know what was ahead. Just like you and I don't know what is ahead. But what we do know is that the promise Jesus gave at his ascension came true, that the Holy Spirit will come to be with us, that the Pentecost story emboldens the church to go forth with authority to proclaim the gospel of the risen Lord. That power was given so that all of the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and that words, which in essence is what is needed to share the good news, was the factor that united and brought the people together. Sometimes Pentecost is seen as the reversal of the effects of the Tower of Babel from Genesis 11. When the people who spoke the same language and the same words wanted to make a name for themselves. So they decided to build a city with a tall tower that will reach the heavens. They wanted to prove themselves mighty. But because of their arrogance, God confused their language so that they could not understand each other. If being monolingual emboldened them to prove themselves above and beyond God's will, confusing their language got them scattered over the face of the earth. If a Babel, God came down to scatter the people and confuse their language, then on Pentecost, God came down to gather the people and make differing languages understandable. At Babel, 
The confusion of language caused the people to spread out and scatter. At Pentecost, God brought men and women from all over Galilee and the surrounding areas together. At Babel, for which we get the English word Babel, they sound like they were babbling. Yet at Pentecost, people who should sound like they were babbling actually understood each other. I love the gift of Pentecost. I love it that it required what I call multicultural fluency from both sides of the aisle. From both sides. I love it how those speaking in unknown languages showed humility to the Spirit. They had to be vulnerable to the Spirit's leading to speak words that they themselves probably did not understand. They did wonder, were they making a fool out of themselves? What is going on? They had to risk the criticism of those listening, which some did scoff and accuse them of drunkenness. But it didn't matter. There were ordained words put in their mouths for the birthing of the church. On the other hand, the crowds had to be vulnerable as well, for they needed to come to a place of understanding that an amazing gift was given to them as well. The gift of Pentecost which allowed the disciples to share the love of God and Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit in the language of those listening. Every one of those onlookers got the message in their own language. It required them to have a spirit of teachability. A spirit of teachability. It allowed the words to penetrate deep in their hearts. The gift of Pentecost is for us to receive this day. As Peter quoted the Old Testament prophet called Joel, that he, he said that in the, in the last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. This will be the new community of women and men where the Spirit pours out spiritual gifts on all people, regardless of who you are. As theologian Jürgen Boltzmann put it, in the kingdom of the Spirit, everyone, everyone, look at yourself, every one of you will experience his and her own endowment and all will experience a new fellowship together. The church is a place where this fellowship begins to take shape as it recognizes the gift of the Spirit in and for all people. Erasmus, the famous Renaissance scholar, once told a classic story which was designed to emphasize how important it is that we take the torch of Christ's ministry with great commitment. In this story, Jesus returns to heaven after his time on earth, the ascension. Amy talked about it, that was ascension last Sunday. The angels gather around him to learn what all happened during his days on earth. So Jesus tells them of the miracles, his teachings, his death on the cross, and of course, his resurrection. When he finishes his story, Michael, the archangel, asks Jesus, what happens now? What happens now? And Jesus answers, I have left behind 11 faithful disciples and a handful of men and women who have faithfully followed me. 
They will declare my message and express my love. These faithful people will build my church. But, but, but response, Michael, what if these people fail? They're human after all. What then is your other plan? And Jesus answers, I have no other plan. No plan B. Jesus is counting on you and you and you and you, online worshipers, on all of us to do the work that the Pentecost spirit gave us all. But the good news is that we are not alone. I've been preaching all this time about the Pentecost. The gift of the Pentecost is with us. The spirit is here to mold us, to melt us, to fill us, and to use us for the kingdom of God. You're gifted. You're all gifted. You're gifted. You're all gifted by this Pentecost gift of the Holy Spirit. You're gifted with the Spirit that enables us to be the church. We are gifted to be the body of Christ, which is the United Methodist Church of Thousand Oaks, which will manifest the love and grace and the forgiveness and redemption and the hope and joy to all people. We have been given the language of the Spirit as a gift. It is up to us to use it to build bridges and break, we build bridges and break down barriers of race, ethnicity, gender, religion, culture, or politics. You're gifted to be courageous storytellers of faith, for your own story is birthed by the same spirit that, has, that was given at Pentecost. So take a, take a deep breath. You've been wearing your mask all this time, so take a deep breath. <laughs> the very last breath that Jesus took that hovered around and instead of dissipating like it normally would, it grew stronger and stronger. It became more powerful as it spiraled around with such force that after it stirred up a whole room full of disciples, it comes to us again and again. This is God's gift of Pentecost. It counts on us to keep the fire burning, the wind blowing, and the gift of words to speak a face that only God can do. Amen? But before amen, I was gonna end it with a poem. Sorry, let me go back. We'll do another amen at the end. But this is a, this is the, a poem that I read that really touched my heart by Steve Garnas Holmes um, from his blog, Unfolding Light. And it reads, Fire of God, be my light. Heat of God, be my fuel. Furnace of God, purify me. Blaze of God, be my upward leaping. Spirit of God, May I burn with your love, your passion to spread mercy in this flammable world. Flame of God, be my breath. Wind of God, be my steady leading. Amen? Amen. Amen.